Hi, I'm Tiffany Latino Gerlach with the Manufacturers Association of Central New York, and this is our first edition of Voices of Manufacturing, highlighting companies operating in the new normal. And I'm joined today with Ross Bernson, President and COO of the Indium Corporation in Utica. Hi, Ross, thanks so much for joining us today. Nice to see you today, Tiffany. Yeah, via WebEx, so everything's different. I know. Um, yeah. <laughs> Just to start, Ross, can you explain a little bit more about what Indium produces? So Indium Corporation is a developer and manufacturer of materials of all different kinds that are generally going into the electronics industry. So we manufacture and fabricate things out of the Indium metal, which is our namesake, of course, but we also make solder paste and fluxes for the semiconductor industry, microelectronics industry. And we're very proud right now to be one of the suppliers of ventilator manufacturers that are being made all over the world right now in the midst of this COVID-19 crisis. And Indium, just uh, on a footprint basis, has uh, factories all over the world. We have factories uh, here in central New York where our headquarters is, and we've been operating here since 1934. We're a family-owned company, so get deep roots in the community. We have five facilities here in central New York. We have a factory in uh, Chicago one in China, Singapore, India, and Korea, and then also one in the UK. So we have a global footprint, and that's actually really helped us recently because we got exposed to some of the challenges of COVID before they ever hit here at our headquarters location. Mm. Well, I wanted to get into that, Ross. As we know, uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic, many manufacturers were deemed essential and they've had to remain open during this. Um, they've been keeping their workers safe. And I know you joined several other companies in central New York to pledge your commitment to keeping your employees safe while your factory is running. Can you explain a little bit more about this initiative since you were so instrumental in getting this off the ground and why it's so important? Absolutely. When we realized that there was a chance that companies were going to be shut down here in central New York, given the challenges that New York State was facing, we said we need to tap into all that insight we have over in Asia and bring some of that here. They had been trouble, struggling with uh, uh, pandemics or epidemics for a while, going all the way back to SARS and MERS uh, back years ago. And so they had already developed a lot of the protocols. So we were able to bring that insight and then um, start making phone calls to our local state officials, but also to other um, uh, leaders of manufacturing companies in the area, Fred Matt, Oliver Weirs from Inficon, uh, you know, uh, we had people, uh, Mike Hennessy from Danfoss, and a whole bunch of other companies, about 16 companies initially came together to say, what are our best practices? We had global companies and local companies all sharing their knowledge and their ideas on how to make our people safe and our, keep our factories running. If we could keep our people safe, that's our first priority then we can have, I think, the responsibility and privilege of continuing to run our factories. And that really ended up all culminating on about March 18th. I remember the day explicitly, we started writing down the pledge and that, that was the origination of the pledge. So very proud of being part of this group. Some of the great ideas uh, didn't come from Indium. One of our, our co-pledgers, uh, co I guess, uh, Dupli came up with this idea of creating a personal pledge for their employees. We adopted that. Another company came up with the idea of putting wristbands on the wrists when they did incoming thermometer checks and health screening. We've adopted that. So again, a lot of really good ideas came from the community of manufacturers here. So together we've become much stronger and much safer. And Ross, can you talk a little bit about what Indium has done to meet the challenges and respond to COVID-19? I know you've been doing, you had to change up your operations a bit. Yeah, so one of the biggest things we did is initially is just get everyone to work from home that can to reduce density. If we can reduce density, reduce the probability of contact, we can never eliminate the chance of on-site transmission, but our goal was to have no on-site transmission. So we're gonna do everything we can. One of the first steps is just have everyone work from home and then site control became really important. We reduced the entry points into all of our facilities to one location and at that location we do health screening, uh, we do a, a IR thermometer scan of their forehead. We also uh, make sure that we talk to them about, have you been in touch with anyone who had COVID? Are you taking care of anyone at home that has symptoms consistent with the COVID virus? And by doing so, we've been able to keep things from coming in. And then as soon as anyone enters our facility, we make sure they go wash their hands. Washing hands and kind of getting back to the basics became really important for us early on. And it's actually interesting. Right now we're finding we need to reinvigorate that because some of the basics you can start losing. 
Uh, another big part of density reduction and, and social distancing was restructuring our, our flow in our factory, but also moving people from second shift, or first shift, to second shift and third shift. So we've spread out our shifts. It used to be on first shift, you couldn't find a parking place. Now there's plenty of parking spaces for every shift because we have over, we have over 600 employees in the, in the central New York area. So our, our factories could get pretty busy when everyone was there at once. But now that we've spread it out, we've really reduced the density. And those are just some of the things we've done to try to make sure that we're mitigating any chance that there's on-site transmission. And I'm proud to say, as we speak today, we have to keep diligent, but we haven't had any on-site transmission. That's wonderful news, Ross. I'm, I'm very glad to hear that. Um, now, we know that New York is getting ready to reopen. And I was wondering if there was any like advice that you have for other manufacturing companies in the region that you'd like to share at this time. Yeah, I think that really is the, I would recommend they go to MACNY.org and, and take a look at the pledge. And, and, and that's a great primer for how to get ready. It involves, as I just talked about, the site control, enhanced hygiene measures, making sure you have enough cleaning materials and you're, and you're providing those cleaning materials to your factory workers so they can clean their own workstation and you are systematically cleaning every touch point in the factory. Again, structuring your social distancing. One of the things that you'll find is your break rooms are, you can have a great layout in the factory, but if your break rooms are congested, everyone's gonna be piled on top of each other at break. So staggering break times, removing chairs, moving the tables further out, maybe taking some empty space in the factory and turning it into a secondary break room. That becomes really important. Having a response plan in place. So I'd really recommend that everyone find, again, we talk about an emergency response. If someone has symptoms on site, what are you going to do? How do you get them to, to, to a place of care safely while keeping them from infecting anyone else? So you need some PPP available. Uh, uh, the the uh, personal protection equipment, you know, like a mask or gloves that you can give to them, give to the people handling them while we help them get home safely or get to the proper health care workers. And then finally, uh, we want to make sure we communicate a lot. There's a lot of anxiety amongst all of us uh, in the midst of this. We all live in this community. And so if you're in a vacuum of information, people get the stress level goes up even more. So we've taken a practice of, of regular regular and, and transparent communications with everyone in the factory and throughout the whole group, including the work from home people who feel disconnected, making sure they feel connected through enhanced communication. And that's really the outline of the pledge. And uh, so if you take a look at that, you'll get some best practices. There's a checklist that'll help you get a sense of what to do. And I know um, the organization is now working on metrics to say, how are we measuring how effective we can be at these, at these initiatives? Great advice, Ross. Thank you again for joining us. I really appreciate it. And we send our best to you and all your employees. And again, head to macne.org for more information about keep people safe and factories running. Thank you.